Welcome to section 7, Network Protocol Analysis. In this section, we're going to take a look at UDP analysis, the connectionless protocol, TCP analysis, the connection-oriented protocol, and graphing I.O. rates and TCP trends, being able to visualize this data that we analyze. This is video 7.1, UDP analysis. In this video, we're going to take a look at how UDP works, what it is, and what's in the UDP header. The UDP protocol is a connectionless protocol, and it's very lightweight, very small header. If you'd like to learn more about the UDP protocol, take a look at RFC 768, available from the IETF. This is the original specification. It's been updated since, if you look through all of the RFCs, but the original specification is 768, and if you'd like to learn about all the details of UDP, which is relatively short, you can do so at this file. Let's take a look at UDP in Wireshark. Here I have a capture of just a few seconds of data, and here we see a whole mixture of applications and protocols. What we can do is simply filter based on UDP. If you push enter, now it only shows UDP packets. And you can see that we have some additional protocols listed in here that are applications that use UDP for their transfer, such as BJNP, which is used by the Canon printer that I have. What we can do in the packet details is take a look at the UDP section. And in the UDP header, there's very few fields. UDP always has eight bytes in its header, and there's only four fields. We have a source port, a destination port, the length, which is the total length of the packet, including header and data, and a checksum, which validates the header information. But it does not encompass all of the data like you would expect with the FCS in a frame, at the end of a frame. And you can see here that we have an unverified checksum. By default, this option is not enabled in Wireshark. What you can do is go to your Edit Preferences, go to your Protocols, we'll skip down to UDP, and you see we have an option here for Validate the UDP checksum if possible. We'll turn that on, and you can see that it now says correct. So if there were any problems in the header and it was manipulated in transfer, we would be able to see that here and it would be marked. Then if you expand that, it'll tell you what the checksum information is that it was calculated. There's usually very few problems that you'll have with a UDP transfer. Either they work or they don't. They do not guarantee any connectivity, and the applications will perform any sort of retransmission if necessary built into the application. It's not handled within the stack like it is with TCP. Because it has a very small header and very few fields, there's very few options to be turned on and off. There's, there's not much here. It's meant to be very simple and lightweight, which is great for voice over IP or streaming video, anything like that that is very time sensitive. It sends the data on its way and it hopes it gets there. Great if it does, if it doesn't, then oh well, you miss a packet or two. One thing you can do if you're not sure if a packet is UDP or not when looking through the packet list up top is we can create a column based on UDP here. So we right click on that and we apply as column. We have a new column now that says user datagram protocol and yes, so it is a UDP packet. So if we remove our filter, we see that we now have yes and blank listed throughout our capture. That's a nice way of easily seeing what is a UDP packet and what isn't, depending if on whether or not you have different coloring rules or something like that that's in a large packet capture. One of the few problems you may see with UDP are destination unreachable responses, those are ICMP packets if you remember, following UDP connection attempts. So you have, if you have a UDP connection attempt and you receive an ICMP destination unreachable in the next packet and you have a number of those continually occurring that's an example where you may have some sort of connectivity issue that you need to investigate. And that's really the only sort of response you're going to get because UDP does not send responses. It, the device itself may send a response telling you that a network is unavailable or something like that, hence the destination unreachable. But otherwise, UDP itself is not going to tell you anything. And so that's why there's very few things that you will see in a packet capture regarding UDP issues because there's nothing built into UDP to tell you there are issues. In our next video, 
TCP analysis one, we're going to take a look at all the different fields in the TCP header and the options that are available.